Oh, yeah. Amen. Amen. Oh, you are? Okay.
Alleluia, Christ is risen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Bishop in the Church of God, on behalf of the clergy and people of the Diocese of Alabama, we present to you George Eileen Griffey to be ordained a deacon in Christ's Holy Catholic Church. Has she been selected in accordance with the canons of this church, and do you believe her manner of life to be suitable to the exercise of this ministry? We certify to you that she has satisfied the requirements of the canons, and we believe her to be qualified for this order. Jordan, will you be loyal to the doctrine, discipline, and worship of Christ as this church has received them? And will you, in accordance with the canons of this church, Obey your bishop and other ministers who may have authority over you and your work. I'm willing and ready to do so, and I solemnly declare that I do believe the Holy Scriptures of the Old and New Testaments to be the Word of God and to contain all things necessary to salvation. And I do solemnly engage to conform to the doctrine, discipline, and worship of the Episcopal Church. Then I would ask you to sign the solemn declaration with your presenters as witnesses. Please stand. Dear friends in Christ, you know the importance of this ministry and the weight of your responsibility in presenting Jordan Alleen Rippey for ordination to the Sacred Order of Deacons. Therefore, if any of you know any impediment or crime because of which we should not proceed, come forward now and make it known. Is it your will that Jordan be ordained a deacon? Yes. Will you uphold her in this ministry? We will. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. God the Father, have mercy on us. God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, have mercy on us. Holy Trinity, one God, have mercy on us. We pray to you, Lord Christ, Lord, hear our for the Holy Church of God, that it may be filled with truth and love and be found without fault at the day of your coming. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
for all members of your church in their vocation and ministry, that they may serve you in a true and godly life. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, For Michael, our presiding bishop, for Glenda and Brian, our bishops, for all bishops, priests, and deacons, that they may be filled with your love, may hunger for truth, and may thirst after righteousness, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, For Jordan, chosen deacon in your church, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, That she may faithfully fulfill the duties of this ministry, build up your church, and glorify your name, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, That by the indwelling of the Holy Spirit she may be sustained and encouraged to persevere to the end, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, For all who fear God and believe in you, Lord Christ, that our divisions may cease and that all may be one as you and the Father are one, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, For the mission of the church, that in faithful witness it may preach the gospel to the ends of the earth, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, For those who do not yet believe, and for those who have lost their faith, that they may receive the light of the gospel, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, For the peace of the world, that a spirit of respect and forbearance may grow among nations and peoples, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, For those in positions of public trust, that they may serve justice and promote the dignity and freedom of every person, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, For the poor, the persecuted, the sick, and all who suffer, for refugees, prisoners, and all who are in danger, that they may be relieved and protected, we pray to you, O Lord. For all who have died in the communion of your church, and those whose faith is known to you alone, that with all the saints they may have rest in that place where there is no pain or grief, but life eternal, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, Rejoicing in the fellowship of the ever-blessed Virgin Mary, blessed Luke and all the saints, Let us commend ourselves and one another and all our life to Christ our God. Lord our God. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God of unchangeable power and eternal light, look favorably on your whole church, that wonderful and sacred mystery. By the effectual working of your providence, carry out in tranquility the plan of salvation. Let the whole world see and know that things which were cast down are being raised up, and things which had grown old are being made new and that all things are being brought to their perfection by him through whom all things were made. Your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Jeremiah. Now the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And before you were born, 
I consecrated you. I appointed you a prophet to the nations. Then I said, Ah, Lord God, truly, I do not know how to speak, for I am only a boy. But the Lord said to me, Do not say, I am only a boy, for you shall go to all whom I send you, and you shall speak whatever I command you. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. Then the Lord put out his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said to me, Now I have put my words in your mouth. The word of the Lord.
A reading from Paul's second letter to the Corinthians. Therefore, since it is by God's mercy that we are engaged in this ministry, we do not lose heart. We have renounced the shameful things that one hides. We refuse to practice cunning or to falsify God's word. But by the open statement of the truth, we commend ourselves to the conscience of everyone in the sight of God. And even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. In their case, the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For we do not proclaim ourselves. We proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord and ourselves as your slaves for Jesus' sake. For it is the God who said, let light shine out of darkness, who has shone in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord. Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. A dispute arose among the disciples as to which one of them was to be regarded as the greatest. But Jesus said to them, The kings of the Gentiles lord it over them, and those in authority over them are called benefactors. But not so with you. Rather, the greatest among you must become like the youngest, and the leader like one who serves. For who is greater, the one who is at the table or the one who serves? Is not the one at the table, but I am among you as one who serves. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. It was a little over five years ago 
before we even knew what a pandemic was that I first met Jordan at a Commission on Ministry meeting. The Reverend Catherine Collier, then chair of the COM, told us that Jordan Rippey, a PhD in accounting of all things, <laughs> was entering the process. I'd never met one of those before. <laughs> oh, there have been nurses and doctors, bankers and therapists, and lawyers, oh, so many lawyers, <laughs> who have answered God's call to ministry in the church as a deacon, priest, and bishop. But this, this was a first. Could a PhD in accounting be ordained? Well, Jordan, you made it. In a few moments, you will be ordained a deacon in Christ's one holy Catholic and apostolic church and begin the next step in your ministry. Thirty-two years ago, I was ordained a deacon. Since that time, I have listened to many sermons at many ordinations. I have heard long sermons and short sermons, good sermons and a few others. Soon you will be ordained by the grace of God and with the consent of the bishop and the people of the Diocese of Alabama. Yes, it will be soon, but only after I finish preaching. And after all these years, there are 17 points I want to share with you today. <laughs> Dramatic pause. However, as many of you know, my wife Phyllis audits and approves all of my sermons before they are preached, and she has limited me to just three of those 17 points and no more than six more minutes total in the sermon. God does work in wonderful ways. From the book of the prophet Jeremiah, we heard Joanne Douglas read, Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. Doesn't everything sound better with a British accent? And the first point I want to make is this. Jordan, in your ministry, God will deliver you. And God will put out his hand and touch your mouth and give you words to say that you never knew you would say. Those hours you've already spent in CPE and during your internships at St. Luke's, St. Mary's, St. David's in Washington and in this diocese have hopefully prepared you to know that you are just not good enough to do this all by yourself. Yes, you can teach cost accounting to MBA students at Johns Hopkins. But what do you say to the person who is searching for God? learning they may have cancer, or standing hungry in a supper line at a homeless shelter? What will you say to your parish when they hear God calling them to serve God's people in our world, but they just don't know where to begin? Know in all certainty that God will give you the words so that the hungry will be fed and the people you serve will follow the Savior, and God's people will see the very face of Christ in those who need to see Christ in others. Believe, follow, and serve, and know that God works in wonderful ways. Let light shine out of the darkness. Joe Mays, without a British accent, but equally well done, read these words of the Apostle Paul to the Corinthians. All of us are called to proclaim Christ Jesus to a world looking for the hope we have found in a risen Savior. There is so much darkness all around us. Everywhere today, and Jordan, my second point is this. In your ministry, you will walk with the people of God, and you will find the hungry, the hopeless, and the sick. And many times you will be surprised by just exactly how God calls you to serve. Some years ago, I was invited to join a medical mission trip to Honduras. Now, Jordan talked about her upcoming Honduran trip last night, and I'd already finished this sermon, so this is God working. But in a church in the mountains, we set up a medical clinic. 
in the local school, a dental clinic, and a storage building next door was transformed into vacation Bible school. I was ready to bring Christ to the poor of Delicius del Norte, to preach, teach, and celebrate the mysteries I had learned in seminary. Maybe I would even baptize and heal these poor people who probably did not even know they needed what I came to bring. I was ready. And oh, God laughs so many times at our plans. Standing in the middle of that church, in my own darkness, not knowing what to do, a doctor handed me the outward and visible signs I would need. There was no bread or wine. Baptism was with drops of hydrogen peroxide in the ear of a child with an infection. My sermon became, Ponga la cabeza e la mesa, por favor. Please put your head on the table. Two girls from the village, each one no more than 13 years old, taught this priest how to serve at an altar that day. The light of Christ shined through the darkness of my own unbelief, and God did work in wonderful ways. Deacon Katie Smith read the words of Luke, and we heard Jesus say, For who is greater, the one who is at the table or the one who serves? Jordan, the third point I want you to always remember in your ministry is, is that you are now called to be a deacon with the people of God as both one who is at table and one who serves God's people. As a deacon, you will stand at Christ's altar with your fellow clergy and say together, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And never forget that Sunday... The feast of our Lord Jesus Christ is a celebration, but never the end. The altar is a celebration of all the work of God that will go on Monday through Saturday. You are now called to serve as a deacon with your fellow Christians all through the week. We have promised to uphold you as our deacon. Hold us to that promise. Love us, lean on us, Pray for us. And all of us here, let us all do the same for Jordan. Imagine if Jordan knows that each one of us here today is praying for her, not just today, but every day. We serve together and at table. May the altar always be where we gather on Sunday to begin all that God will do throughout the week when hearts and hands and minds are open to the Holy Spirit. Know that the altar points the way to how you will serve in the world. Hold hands, feed others, hug regularly, and heal the people of God with the people of God. Then you will understand, celebrate, and believe just how God does work in wonderful ways. In a very few moments now, yes, I'm almost done, Bishop Curry will put her hands on your head, and you, Deacon Rippey, will take a new and next step in your ministry. You will pledge yourself to this sacred and wonderful calling that we share. You will hear the good news and be amazed at what God says through you. You will see the light of Christ shining in the faces of those who serve with you and those who God serves through you. No, you will never be good enough, and you don't have to be. Just know that God will work through you in wonderful ways. Amen.
And now let us rehearse our common faith as we say together the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified on the Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and the kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, we worship the Lord heart. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated. My sister, every Christian is called to follow Jesus Christ, serving God the Father through the power of the Holy Spirit. God now calls you to a special ministry of servanthood directly under your bishop. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are to serve all people, particularly the poor, the weak, the sick, and the lonely. As a deacon in the church, you are to study the Holy Scriptures, to seek nourishment from them, and to model your life upon them. You are to make Christ and his redemptive love known by your word and example to those among whom you live, work, and worship. You are to interpret to the church the needs, concerns, and hopes of the world. You are to assist the bishop and priests in public worship and in the ministration of God's word and sacraments. And you are to carry out other duties assigned to you from time to time. At all times, your life and teaching are to show Christ's people that in serving the helpless, they are serving Christ himself. My sister, do you believe that you are truly called by God and his church to the life and work of a deacon? I believe I am so called. Do you now in the presence of the church Commit yourself to this trust and responsibility. I do. Will you be guided by the pastoral direction and leadership of your bishop? I will. Will you be faithful in prayer and in the reading and study of Holy Scriptures? I will. Will you look for Christ in all others, being ready to serve and assist those in need? I will. Will you do your best to pattern your life and that of your family in accordance with the teachings of Christ so that you may be a wholesome example to all people? I will. Will you in all things seek not your glory, but the glory of the Lord Christ? I will. May the Lord, by his grace, uphold you in the service that he lays upon you. Amen. Amen.
O oh God, most merciful Father, we praise you for sending your Son, Jesus Christ, who took on himself the form of a servant and humbled himself, becoming obedient even to death on the cross. We praise you that you have highly exalted him and made him Lord of all, and that through him you know that whoever would be great must be servant of all. We praise you for the many ministries in your church and for calling this your servant to the order of deacons. Therefore, Father, through Jesus Christ, your Son, give your Holy Spirit to Jordan. Fill her with grace and power and make her a deacon in your church. Make her, O Lord, modest and humble, strong and constant to observe the discipline of Christ. Let her life and teaching so reflect your commandments that through her many may come to know you and love you as your son came not to be served, but to serve. May this deacon share in Christ's service and come to the unending glory of him who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And now you stay here, you stay over here and let, <laughs> let people come to you. Jordan, receive this Bible as a sign of your authority to proclaim God's word and to assist in the ministration of the holy sacraments. Now you can turn around. Let us greet the newest deacon in the Episcopal Church. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Many, many people will say many things to you, Jordan, I am sure, downstairs in the reception in a little while. Um, I want to thank you all for coming. I want to thank you for being uh, here to, do, to be here for this celebration. Uh, and if, uh, I think uh, David was going to tell you that Rich uh, got stranded uh, in an airplane um, that didn't take off in Baton Rouge. Otherwise, he would have been here this morning. Uh, and he sends his greetings and his love to you, of course, and he hates to have missed this, uh, I'm sure. Um, but welcome, all of you, and thank you for coming. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself as an offering, a sacrifice to God.
Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through the great shepherd of your flock, Jesus Christ our Lord, who after his resurrection sent forth his apostles to preach the gospel and to teach all nations and promise to be with them always, even to the end of the ages. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you've made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember, remember his death, we, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ in his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son and his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit, and in the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where with St. Luke and all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church and the author of our salvation, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
people of God. Please stand.
join me in the after communion prayer in your bulletin. Almighty Father, we thank you for feeding us with the holy food of the body. of your word and sacraments. We pray that Jordan may be to us an effective example in word and action, in love and patience, and in holiness of life. Grant that we, with her, may serve you now and always rejoice in your glory through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now because the bishop forgot the peace, and because Jordan sat down so fast, I forgot she was supposed to do it. So she is supposed to do it, and we are going to do it. So do it. peace of the Lord be always with you. And now may the peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of Jesus Christ our Lord and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you this day and remain with you always. Amen.
Let us go forth into the world, rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia. Amen.